We've come to the point in our program where the comptroller is scheduled to come forward and take the oath of office. Sadly, with the passing of our friend Judy Barr Topinka on December 10th, 2014, she is unable to be sworn in for the term to which she was elected last November by the voters of our great state. Therefore, Secretary White, in my first formal action as governor, it is with a heavy heart but full confidence that Judy would approve of the action I take today, that I declare the office of Comptroller to be vacant at this time. Pursuant to Article 5, Section 7 of the Constitution of 1970, I hereby appoint Leslie Munger to fill the vacancy and ask that Leslie come forward to take the oath of office at this time. Please raise your right hand and repeat after me. I, I Leslie Geisler Munger, do solemnly swear, do solemnly swear that, I will support the Constitution of the United States, that I will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of Illinois. And the Constitution of the State of Illinois and that I will faithfully discharge, and that I will faithfully discharge the, duties of the, office the duties of the office of Comptroller of the State of Illinois, of Comptroller of the State of Illinois to the best of my abilities. To the best of my abilities. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon, Governor Rauner, Lieutenant Governor Sanguinetti, Attorney General Madigan, Speaker, Secretary of State White, Treasurer Frerichs, and distinguished guests. It is my honor to be here today, and I am humbled by the opportunity to serve as Illinois State Comptroller. As one who grew up in Joliet, graduated from the University of Illinois, and has worked and raised a family here, I am so grateful and excited for the chance to help address the most pressing issues of our state. I'm also incredibly thankful for my husband, John, our sons, Tom and Andy, and our family and friends for all of their love and encouragement these past several weeks and especially the past few days. They have been absolutely amazing and I am blessed to have them here with me today. Yet this day brings mixed emotions. Just one month ago, Illinois lost a true leader and trailblazer with the passing of Judy Barr Topinka. Judy was one of a kind. She always remembered that, tax, that she worked for the taxpayers. She constantly asked them what she could do to help them and make their lives better and then she worked tirelessly to make it happen. She stood up for what she thought was right. She spoke frankly and with common sense. Her legacy of servant leadership is a model for all of us. There will never be anyone quite like her. <clears throat> a 
but we do have an opportunity to govern in her spirit. We can raise the bar of fiscal responsibility and find less expensive ways to get the job done. We can focus on living within our means and work to reduce spending without slashing critical services. We can look for ways to make our government more efficient, and we can start by looking to consolidate the fiscal offices of the state with the Comptroller and the, and the Treasurer's office. This will save us $12 million a year. We all know that finances are our greatest challenge, and it's time that we address that challenge head on. We must remember that the dollars our state spends are hard-earned taxpayer dollars. We have a duty to the taxpayers of our state to spend each dollar wisely, and they have a right to see exactly where their money goes. We've made tremendous strides in government transparency in recent years. Now it's time to take that to the next level and to use technology to give our citizens every tool they need so they can follow their money. With the state facing a bill backlog of $6.7 billion and payment delays of three months or more, we have an obligation to Illinois to ensure that Illinois' most vulnerable residents do not slip through the cracks. As Comptroller, I will continue to prioritize payments for not-for-profit and social service agencies that take care of our seniors, children, developmentally disabled, and other special needs residents. I have seen the difference that this policy can make firsthand. In my hometown of Lincolnshire, I've been an active volunteer and a member of the Board of Directors for the Riverside Foundation, a not-for-profit serving intellectually and developmentally disabled adults. At one point in time, the state was one year and nearly a million dollars behind in payments to Riverside. It reached the point where we were taking out loans in order to pay the bills. That started to change when the Comptroller's Office began prioritizing payments for organizations like, your, like ours. And we finally had some reliability in payments from our state. We could stop hand-wringing about what services we were going to have to cut and instead focus on how to better serve our clients. There are hundreds of stories like Riverside's from organizations in every part of Illinois and we have a moral obligation to ensure that they can count on their state to make good on their promised payments. As you know, I was appointed Comptroller just one week ago, and in the coming days I look forward to meeting with staff, talking with constituents, and reaching out to lawmakers to craft a comprehensive strategy. But there is one thing that I can promise you today. I will always speak out for what I believe is, is in our best long-term financial interest for our state. And if I ruffle some feathers along the way, well, so be it. I really believe I owe that to the taxpayers of our state. And in that same spirit, I look forward to working with everyone in every part of the state to tackle the fi financial issues we have doesn't matter if you are a student or a senior, a Democrat, Republican, or Independent, from Rockford or Carbondale or somewhere in between. Each of us knows that the most important thing that we can do for our state is to get our fiscal house in order. And we all have a responsibility to work together to get that job done. If we do these things, if we build on the example set by Judy, we can regain our fiscal footing in this state and make Illinois a great place for our families and our businesses. I look forward to partnering with each of you to make that happen. Now, let's get to work. Thank you all, and God bless.